Super Mario Bros. Welcome back, everybody. Dre Cogs again. We're playing some more Humankind uh, as the Egyptians. Uh, forever. This is our uh, Pharaoh for Life uh, playthrough, I guess. Maybe it's called? I don't know. No. It's our Transcending as the Egyptians. So the rule is simple. We become the Egyptians in the ancient era. We stay there throughout the eras until we're wiped out or until we conquer the world. I don't know how this is going to play out. We are on an eight-player uh, large map. I don't think this is huge. I think this is large. There's three to five continents. So, so far, we're on a continent. We've only seen one other group, and that is the Nubians down here in Kurma. Uh, we actually haven't made official contact with them because we have just become the Egyptians. So, at the end of last episode, we chose our faction. We literally went 18 turns. We were the last ones to pick, and... Uh, because of that, the Egyptians were still left over, so we got the option to stick around and be lazy about uh, leveling up. Nobody uh, nobody was rushing us to grow up, and uh, so we didn't. Uh, right now, we've been exploring the map. There's, well, there's probably, we might have an end of the continent here. We might not find anybody else. I mean, it looks like it's kind of, well, maybe not. It's probably opening up to a bunch more stuff. But anyways, this is our current world as is. First thing uh, on the agenda today is to be a city. Make a city. So we're going to choose one of, and we have to do this this turn, one of our outposts, and we're going to turn it into a city. We get it for free, just the first one. First one's free. That's it. This is Memphis. Lovely. So a couple of things have happened instantly. This has now become a city, so it's got a whole variety of build options. Um, it's telling us right there, that's a city with a beautiful shield, and the dark blue line around the outside indicating, because I love blue, as you know on the channel, and uh, so we have this dark blue line. That is our territory. We can build inside that territory only as far as what this city's build things can get. So let's see. We could build a farmer's quarters. It's only going to work if it's connected to another district. You start with your city center. In this case, it's called the main plaza. I believe that is called. There it is, main plaza. So anything that gives a bonus on or attaches industry to the main plaza or whatever, that's going to be there. If we have another, when we attach this place, which we are going to do, we can do that right away, uh, that will be called an administrative center to differentiate the two. So this is the center of Egypt right now. This is all of Egypt right now. Uh, one population already here. Now that was here because this uh, outpost grew for a while. This one also has one population. It's producing 17 food for itself and 12 industry for itself. However, that is not going to the city. The industry is lost. And this uh, city is doing, this place is doing effectively nothing with that industry. They are, however, using that 17 food to grow their population. They'll grow in four turns. This one's not quite finished. So what we're going to do is select here. And the first thing I want to do is attach this. We need 30 influence. I only have 20. We make four per turn. So what else can we do here? Well, we can build things. There's a variety, I think, four or five different things. You can, I guess five different categories you can build in. They're right here. Wonders or shared projects. So... Holy Sites and Wonders and other such shared projects. Districts, which are these three, they are going to be tiles that we fill. So we can place our Egyptian pyramid, for instance, here. Uh, where would we want to put that? Well, it's going to turn everything... It's going to utilize... Oh, man, there's so much to explain. Um, it's going to exploit certain stuff. Anyways, let's get stick with this. Three districts we've got options for right now. Uh, our specialty or emblematic district. The Farmer's Quarters, which is going to give us more food production and more ability to have more farmers, more of our population working in food production. Um, and uh, the Maker's Quarters. Man, this is important. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got those three districts. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. We got these three districts. Next thing is infrastructure. So infrastructure, I think of it as a a uh, building that's inside the city center, basically, or doesn't have a, a tactile spot or a, a tangible spot on the surface. It uh, doesn't take up a square, but it affects everything throughout. So you could get, like, one of the things we're going to get is a lumber yard, which means every district or square, every hex that is in the influence of Memphis, so controlled attached districts, if they're on a log in a forest, they'll get a bonus, right? So you can affect all of this stuff, infrastructures internal of the city, so to speak. Districts are tiles on the ground that sieve works, you, your siddlers work tiles. In Humankind, they work up here in the FIMS, the Food, Industry, Money, and Science slots. Not a specific tile. 
vitally important to remember as a guy for a guy who came from the Civ world and has never experienced uh, any of the endless games that these guys make. Um, so units also we can build, and uh, there's public ceremonies. So these are sort of repeatable events, I guess. I haven't. Uh, it can be repeated, but basically, it's it would take us 36 turns, and then when we're done, our population will forever produce five more food. That's how I understand this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And the one that's missing, of course, is wonders. So you really got to understand. I'm trying to be tutorialish in the first few episodes, then we'll get into more fast pace. But there's something you need to understand about this game. There's, I think, four or so ways that you get the fims. Yeah, about that. So the city has this much food production. Well, where is it getting it from? The tiles around it, this produces two food and two uh, industry on this tile. If I mouse over here, you can see on the left the uh, pop-up, it says exploited terrain. This has the uh, similar. This one's two food. It's It's got similar production, but no exploited. We only exploit the stuff that's directly next to a district that has that exploitation. So if I mouse over this farmer's quarters, you notice how the exploited resources up top here only shows the food thing. If I place a thing here, the tile, uh, where would it be a good example? Over here, it's going to remove the industry production from that tile, add uh, plus one to the food production for that tile, and it'll mean that any surrounding tiles that are not already exploited by something else will start getting the food from. So notice how it goes from zero to one. This shows one there, but that's not being exploited. Right, so where you place these makes a big, big difference. And it'll make more sense as we go, but again, on the industry tile, we've removed the food, but notice we don't get anything from these three tiles if I place that there, because they have no native industry production. Whereas on this side, I would get that industry, that industry, and that industry, but this food I would not get unless I put, put a food exploiter there. If I then build another district over it, it expands out further. Does that start to make a little sense? Maybe? Uh, the first thing I want to do, however, is this pottery uh, workshop. This piece is going to take us four turns with our current uh, industrial production to finish. Uh, we could also spend 105 bucks, which we only have 10, um, to produce it instantly. Uh, it's going to add four to our influence. We currently make four, so that's ridiculously powerful. The next thing I want to do is um, probably this Egyptian pyramid. Now, I'm thinking food's going to probably might come down this way. We might build farming quarters down there. We might build science quarters down there. Uh, but I like the look of this over here. There's no real good spot for this. Maybe here is a good one. Nine industry. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's all right. All right, let's queue that up. Now, and notice it's going to take our uh, stability down by 10. So that's fine. Uh, Food-wise, we do want to build, but we'll build elsewhere. Because next episode, or next turn, we're going <laughs> to... The rate I'm going, it'll be an episode. Next turn, we're going to uh, get the influence there. So we're going to expand the city. All right, so... General plan is to continue this way. nonsense and uh, scout the enemy's city quite go. aggressively. Okay, so that is the edge of his turf. All right, let's uh, head down. We'll unify these units here. This one can come over and join them over, over here. So I want to stack. Currently, we see how this lock here. We can only have four units in one army, and only one army can fight together at a time. So where's another four units? Let's say you and you. I'm gonna bring this guy into, up Let's to the go. city. I'm gonna grab these two. I'm gonna go like that and that to combine them up. We're gonna head them to the east. We're gonna head this guy. Uh, I'm gonna head him around. We'll meet up this way. So, ah, good, new event. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, so these two are going to try to kind of Get a little groupy over groupy thing going over here. They're gonna group up this issue. Can you climb up there? We can't. So we can head down this way. And they're gonna group up. So we got like I wanna have a group of four dudes down here and a group of four dudes down here to harass the crap out of these guys. <laughs> that's that's the plan. Just harass them nasty. Now if you notice, these are no longer tribesmen. Two things have happened. They've gotten a they've gotten a, a little less clothing and a little more strength. Actually three things. They also no longer uh, gray goo. They no longer collect food from, well, there are no food tiles sitting around anymore. If they hunted this thing, what we would get from hunting this instead of five food and five influence, we now only get like five or ten monies. Not particularly grand. 
Uh, so I'm gonna leave the, let these guys do a bit of join up and running. They can com combine. See, we got 10 for Rantek in that. That's pretty good. Uh, this guy just finished this spot, so he can head up and explore. We're gonna head up and basically try to explore the rest of this continent and run into our next neighbor, and or, if there is none, um, <laughs> celebrate long and hard. Uh, Tezeka. So it's another forest town. Ah, there we go. There are still a few curiosities left. This is a discovery that has a different style to it. Um, still no... Oh, we are on a coast. Oh, guys. It might actually be only the two of us, so we're gonna go hyper-aggressive on the Nubians. Oh, yeah, we're gonna shove their faces into the ocean. Uh, that's how we play this game. Uh, found a curiosity, uh, ru ruined shrine. Provided plus 15 science and 10 influence. Nice. So science is down here. Good segue. We're making five a turn. That's it. So that's pretty fantastic that we're get, we just got 15 science. That's three turns worth of research. We also started with a bunch. Why do I not have... Why do I not have my research? Didn't I, didn't I have some leftover research? Uh, did I screw it up? No. Thought we had leftover research from before. Anyways, uh, so let's think about what we're gonna need. Uh, I want these things connected, the salt, for instance, and these dye connected as soon as possible. Uh, that would be done with the artisan's quarters. Uh, hooking up the horse to get our, well, in this case, our scout riders. Uh, and an animal barn, which is a great building. Uh, that would be done with domestication. We could get carpentry, lets us clear forest. I don't really care for the clear forest feature. A lot of people use the crap out of it. I, I'm trying to think longer term, like I want this to be a big industrial center, so that'd be awesome. Maybe. Cut down the forest, you get dry grass left over, which is mediocre or worse farming, and uh, you remove the forest, which to us is actually a bonus resource, so maybe we'll keep that. Archers, pretty good units. Uh, they give you some range damage. The lumber yard also would be good for us because any tile that we exploit that has the woodland, like this one does, uh, and I think there's some forest. Yeah, and forest. Both of those are going to get an extra industry point if we build this lumber yard. That's pretty potent. City defense would allow us our warrior, our first very fairly strong uh, infantry unit. Also allow us to get the garrison, which is a highly underrated and highly overpowered um, district, in my opinion. It adds stability. And when you get all the bonuses that add the stack through the various different religion things or civic things or technologies these can get up to i think as far as 30 stability which is basically three full places or another yeah, it gets huge uh and adding palisade walls around the city is going to be massive when we uh yeah, when well, we never will be or less friendly with our friends uh i think since we've got the horses here i want to get those going Mm, we could also do the granary to increase our food production, but this would also be an infrastructure for food. Let's go with the, the domestication. That will also get us the ability to make scout riders, and then I think we'll go with the city defense. Oops, I switched the other way. There we go. Domestication, then city defense. Um, that should do. That's going to get us the tech we need to get started. Create your religion. So, um, yeah. Pick a, pa a base for your people's beliefs. I don't know if there is a meta that is the best for this yet. I'm, it's so early and I haven't done any, you know, Reddit watching and all that. I'm trying to kind of more experience the game as I go. Um, if we do the shamanism, every population in a city or outpost produces one pot, one faith. Um, one science. One Sorry, one faith. If we have a territory attached to a city, including the city itself, we get five. So our population, if we have, let's say, our plan is to have Memphis with two attached things, that's already 15 faith. We would need to have a population of 15 in that city in order to outstrip that. So early on, it seems like polytheism is the way to go. I think we'll go that way. There, Look, it's an obelisk. Of course we're going to go that way. The Egyptians loved obelisks, didn't they? Follow me. Uh -huh. Well, I guess, you know, a big stone circle would be an impressive stru structure as well, right? So let's keep exploring. We got a couple of those questions there. Question mark there. We got our pearls still way up north. Another copper. Oh, two copper is important if we end up with chariots. Our, our specialty chariot is requires only horse, which is pretty nuts. Ah, we got an event here. Oh, yes, the Empire Foundation. 
by what right do we rule? We have uh, our first look at the civics tree. So there is a civics tree, civics wheel. There is, what, seven, seven different civics. I don't know what each of them is about. I think this is like your military set. This is your laws. This is your, I don't know what, governance maybe sort of thing. Looks like uh, family, society, I'm not sure. Uh, music, arts, maybe, faith, uh, what's this, economy, and I think that we said that was military. Interesting, okay. So each of them has some sort of, oh look, public spending and investment. <laughs> I could have just let my over there, right? Really to so I was right on most of them. Uh, criminal and other civil issues. Mm-hmm. Organization. Nice. Excellent. Organization. This is day-to-day day day -day life in your empire. There we go. Uh, civics related to cultural issues and arts. Related to beliefs and what is accepted or not. All right. So we got two options here. Let's look at the legitimacy one. Uh, okay. This is... How much influence do we have right now? I don't know. kind of want to look before I choose. We have 34 influence. Okay. So this might be... Very important to choose the right way. So there's two of these options. One drops the... We basically choose either side. Oh, there's so much to look at in these first episodes. Uh, because I want to be tutorial-ish. I want to explain things for those who are not playing the game and have not bought it. It is expensive. I think it's worth it. But again, that's because I'm playing it. And I paid for it. Early act, early paid for it. Made for it like three months ago to get uh, to get it when it came out. I wasn't able to record till now. I'm sad. Um, so there's four basic... Um, political or ide ideological um, lines. So either collectivism versus, versus individualism, then there's homeland versus world, there is liberty versus authority, and then there is tradition versus progress. All those little pop-ups, events, all these things are going to either move this little square one tile west, left or right, or in this case like three tiles left or right. Um, and if you're sitting in the center, that gives you 10 stability. So all four of these in the center is going to give you 40 stability in your cities. If you go all the way to progress, that's going to give you 10% science versus on this side, it's going to give you plus four faith per territory. So depending on where you want your society to go and how it affects, like if the Nubians are all on the right and we're all on the left, we're going to have political problems. Uh, all right, so legitimacy, that's, that's one we can choose. It's going to give us either we have half the cost of creating new outposts or we have a 20% reduction to attaching an outpost or absorbing a city. So both of the absorbing a city make sense more later, but the attaching is when we grab, spend 30 to grab that. Well, we'd spend a little less. Uh, I'm going to skip on that one because I know this founding myths one gives us the option to add five influence to our main plaza and shift us towards uh, progress, which is kind of where I want to be long term. If we wanted to go this way, we could um, produce more faith. Two per territory plus the three from the action. So this down here is actually what we get for choosing this. And this is separate. So we could get flat five faith per territory. Push our faith pretty good. Add stability, or I guess less stability. Half the stability. Uh, I think we go with plaza. Why was plaza this influence. even a question? I know, Let's keep I it know. simple. We've been here. It's our place. The um, so reason I wanted to do that is because acting civic and acting civics and connecting cities and all the rest of it requires influence. And you might as well be getting more in the meantime. In four turns, it pays for itself. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, more movement options here. We're going to let this guy sit here and wait. You're going to come up this way to join your friends here. And they are going to eventually work their way up to here get out of the neighbor's territory. Now, we haven't seen any other units. That's why we don't, uh, we're not considered trespassing. Nobody's told us not to hang out in their town. Let's have a look at what else we can do as far as movement and get this game a rolling for us. Uh, I'm gonna scoot around you, kind little deary friend. Ah, another, uh, one of those there things over here. That's excellent. Let's, uh, scoot through here. I think we should be able to start picking up the pace a little bit, at least in between these events. Now, what this guy, uh, the city has a population of one of eight, which is how many slots we've got. The city center gives us eight, two of each type. If we built this uh, 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 farmer's quarters, we would get one more. It says plus one farmer slot on the city. So we'd add this up to three, then we could have a total of nine population. Uh, you can't put any more than this people's to work. 
tells us our stability, how much influence and faith is being generated, or number of followers, sorry, not faith. Um, this allows us to kind of tell it what automatically where to put new people. Um, what else? So we got our, yeah, we got our science, our money, our industry, and our food. So this guy right here, I can actually tell him, select him, and I can say, uh, disband the unit. Anywhere inside a territory's sphere of influence, so anywhere inside this dark blue circle, he will join the city. If it was in here, he would join the outpost. So he is a population. Likewise, if I go into the city and I build a population, I'm expanding right now, the city is now a two. I can grab this, move it over here, and increase our food production. Um, I could conversely put them both over here and we get a little more industry. Quite a bit more, I almost double. <clears throat> that might be worth doing. No, we'll put them over here. Uh, I want the food, the population to grow. The bigger the population is, the faster we grow, the more we people we get in industry. Since we founded our religion, we can actually build an obelisk of the gods, which is a very Egyptian looking structure, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Uh, and I think we'll put that right down near the border of our friends here. Can't do it, we're not doing it yet because we haven't attached this thing. We're gonna shove it down there. Uh, so that's the wonders and shared projects things. Uh, like I was saying, if we build another unit, like another scout, we wanna bring him back, he's gonna take some industry to do so, or a warrior or a whatever, and he's gonna reduce our population by one. Sending him back out. Um, so what I was talking about about the Fims. These people in the city will work for every one of these guys we have in this slot. Our current food per farmer is six, base level. Various different things will increase that, like ha having another farmer's district will increase the food per adjacent farmer's quarters, or farmer one farmer slot, right? Uh, this building that we've got here, where is it? It adds three industry to adjacent, it adds three in, uh, industry to the tile, and to adjacent marker, um, maker's quarters. There are some that add per, like we mentioned, there we go, plus one science per researcher. So this actually only is useful as far as the research portion. You get the stability, but the research portion is only affected if you've got people in the slot. So that's one way to make fins. A second way to make fins is exploited tiles. When I tell farmers, uh, build the farmer's quarters, any tile nearby, like if I built it here, would gain those. Uh, the third way is through things like this. Specialty resources will do that. Um, what's the fourth? I don't know if I remember what it was. At the moment, I don't. Oh yes, the other one is through uh, infrastructure. So some things in infrastructure like this will just give straight up valuable resources. All right, let's uh, continue. What else do we have to do? Let's a peek down at the edge of the coast. We might as well look at the end of the world as we know it. Come I feel here. fine. That guy can go ahead and go! ransack that because we might as well get the cash for it. Not really interested in hanging. Well. We could train a lot of dudes off of fighting these things. We could build, like, some riders and go smack those things around. Ah, not really worth the micromanaging. Greetings that. to the new right. Greetings now to the Nubians. there's some huh? good fortune. A neighbor who may be more interested in commerce than conflict. Well, well, well. Totally what we're here for. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, here's the, here's the diplomacy the stage has begun. So... She's come to us by starting out and saying, Hey, ah, friend, we gotta talk about something. Um, you're at peace with the Nubians. Cool. We only know each other. Uh, she's offered a proposal for trade. Now, this is just the luxuries. I could either accept it or refuse it, or I could counter. If I if I refuse it, she gets a grievance. So that's we'll talk about that later, but it's it's gonna give her reasons to get upset with me, and her people would support aggression towards us. If I accept it, we open up the value of having the ability to trade uh, luxuries. Not strategic resources, not iron and copper, but luxuries. Um, we could also, conversely, we could counter it. And this would propose an exchange that she say, you know what, sweeten the deal. I think you can do better. Hmm? A proposal <laughs> I can sing the praises of. We accept. Nice. Now, if you refuse it, you this don't... This is or, most sorry. satisfying. If you refuse it, you get a, a crisis brewing, a grievance brewing. If you counter and they say no, you don't seem to get that. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, now, we could do surprise wars. That's the other diplomacy thing we can do. Uh, surprise war is a little less... It gets more people, other people, other empires upset with you. But uh, they get upset too. But it gets them more upset. If we wait until we have enough war support in our society 
We can declare a regular war that doesn't give those advantages, or we could, pardon me, propose an alliance. That's totally where we're going to be going, right? No. Um, oh, we have our money up here. I didn't know that. 52.531. Penny pinchers. Um, we could propose an alliance here with them, which would allow us better treaties, improving trade, and so on. Uh, not in, not of interest right now. Probably never. But anyways. Uh, how did we how did we get oh I guess we just saw that. Maybe that's what gave that to us. Interesting. Alright, so uh let's head on to that river. That'll give us some mobility and end the turn. Right, we just spent 30 minutes to do one turn. No problem. The first ransack. I wouldn't that call dude, it elegant. You already told me that. But it may you? teach ah. them to keep their doors locked. It may teach the the mammoths to keep their doors locked. I'm sure that's what's gonna happen. Alright, so this guy's gonna uh, work his way down here to join his friend. Good, we got the four of them stacked up here. Now, we are not at war. As per that treaty, we are so Always not at war. A we are to at see peace. You. We're not in a non-aggression treaty, which means these gold ones are the active ones. So we can trade resources if they had them. They can buy our resources if we connect some. Our luxuries, rather. We could also share maps to upgrade our reveal capital. So because we've, we're at peace, we can see each other's capital. We know about each other. Uh, we have closed borders right now, so they can't come into our actual cities. We can do open borders. Self-explanatory. Right now, however, we do not have a non-aggression pact, nor are we going to get one. Because that would stop all combat that doesn't declare war. In humankind, if you attack another unit, it depends where and why whether or not that's an act of war. If they're in their homelands, it is an act of war. If they're out and about, it's a skirmish. And so we can tolerate skirmishes right now. So... Without causing a war, we could actually, if when we get the chance, we can move over and attack this guy here. And because he is, although he's in his air, his outpost area, he's not actually actively in his attached lands. So, if possible, I'd like to get up there. Like, as soon as possible. I should have moved more aggressively to make that happen sooner. But, uh, you know, live and learn or die. Oh, so, that's going to cause, if I try to move to that tile, I'm trying to move within his turf, which is going to get him upset. If I, however, try to move up here, she'll be okay with it. I keep saying he, but I, it looked very much like a female avatar, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, let's go up. That's a very thick cliff. Let's head this way. Over this way. All right, this guy over here has the chance to come over across here. and find some new stuff. Uh, sanctuary and a uh, discovery. Good. Up here, let's have a look at the northern coast. I like how much vision you get out over the water. Kind of get to see. Like, there's actually some land up here. There's some islands up here. Yeah, I like it. Okay, this guy, unfortunately, look, he's he's claiming this. Now, that's going to take him... Thuban is going to form in eight turns. If I can get over there and park a unit on it and start ransacking it, that's perfectly within the political legals. It'll upset them. But it's not a decla declaration of war directly. Um... We could stop him from settling that and expanding it. That's what I'd like to do. Really kind of border harass the crap out of him. All right, let's get... Oh, there we go. Apparently he wants to get in on this fight. That is a smart move. Because this tile, these units are now locked. Even if I if I retreat or if I win, whatever happens, and I will win, so we'll do this. Um, Whatever happens with this, they are... Follow me able to lock us down for this turn. We won't be able to move, I don't think, this turn. You fools. Action, young man. Let's pop around here. This guy's on river, so we'll not move. That guy there, and that guy there should be able to defend him. Chomp a chomp. Done. Now, that seemed like a suicide move, but it was not at all, because now I can't move this... Oh, I can. My bad. I'm wrong in this case, too. Okay, I could move here, which I'm going to do. Come back for the village, because right now I can move in and... There you go. So, he just took the aggressive. I step next to him. The AI very, very frequently does this. They'll automatically attack you when you get within range, because it's simultaneous turns. And they can see everything. The AI knows all! Or whatever that is. Uh, let's stand down Follow here. Me. Leave him room to... Actually, let's not do that. Let's stand you back come up there. Here. This guy can come down here. And we'll deploy off the river because there's a river penalty being on there. He's going to start there, okay. Before we attack, we'll move one more dude in here just to give this guy a plus two for friendly units. 
And if I can... Oh, there we go. I'll move you around behind, because you get a plus four for rear attack. Let's do that. I like it. Uh, if I go over here go. and over here, this guy also gets rear attack and one friend attack. I like it. Let's do that. Chompy chomp. We gotta try to practice being intelligent about these attacks, at least early on. So, we got two kills. Now, another thing that is doing is that's adding to our um, era stars, because we didn't talk about these yet. Uh, we'll get through this. We'll get through this turn, just like five turns this time. I think we started at turn 18. Um, uh, this is the era we're in. There are seven pursuits, seven focuses, seven potential star era stars, and you can get a bronze, which is the color this is going for. We've already got this one. Oops. Which there is. Um, the bronze agrarian star we have, which is worth, in this case, it was worth about 100 uh, influence. It gets less valuable the more people in that era that have claimed this. So as more people get agrarian stars, future uh, bronze agrarian stars, future bronze agrarian stars are worth less. Less re reward, the fame for doing so. So we got 100 points for that. Cool. Um, we've got six normal ones and one that everybody all seven of them everybody gets but because we're a builder we have this builder affinity so builder cultures like yourselves earn more fame from buildings from builder stars so if at all possible i suggest you get uh through the uh through these stars and get these uh these top, i guess it's only a small percentage like 10 it's only 10 percent more yeah that's fine but we'll be able to get uh we got just got two of the six kills needed so this has to be on a player or i should say on other humans animals don't count um barbarian ish groups they will count or uh the nubians they count <laughs> i love it all right this is gonna be a very fun play i think i am looking forward to it all right these two dudes i think we will get the i mean i want these guys to combine up here for sure you can head up to Oh, you can come this way. Good, good. Oh, that's going to get you into a battle probably next turn. Unless we can get you combined up with your friend. Uh, we might move this guy back into the city. That might be the go-to here. Oh, the, uh, Ther Therese here is settled, so uh, it's finished. So right now it's producing 10 food and, se and wasting 17 industry. So I really want to connect those. This one is uh, 17 food and 12 industry. That's a tough call. We have 9 surplus food right now. We would get zero population from here. This one has one, so they'll be assimilated into the capital. So we'd be at four people with this one. I think we'll go ahead and attach this. Let's check there. And we have 34 influence. We're going to spend the 30 to attach this one. Now, we could have done the influence, spent the influence on... Um, we could have spent the influence on the civic that reduces that, but I, don't, I think I want to go the other direction with that one. Let's see, what do we got? Blades of the Empire. A new civic is unlocked. Now, these civics unlock due to various different things. Uh, in this case, I think combat with another faction is probably what unlocked this. Because um, that's what we just experienced. And uh, the civics of having your first settle, city settled, that gave us those other ones. Having settled a religion gave us one. You know, that sort of thing. You don't... You don't deal with a civic to decide what to do with uh, with foreign religions until you've experienced a foreign religion. And so on. Uh, so our army composition, we have two options. Professional soldiers, which gives us, which moves us uh, to the left. The liberty? Yes, that would move us. Oh, we don't have the influence for this. But we can get plus one combat strength on all our units, which is ridiculously powerful. Or 30% cheaper. We are an industry-focused place, so that will make us be able to kick those out pretty darn good. We also have the legitimacy one, of course, which we have not chosen. Limited factor seems to oh, for me to always be influence. All right, so the war one, the battles won there, have uh, caused grievances. Have Let's have a look at what this my is. My attention. Uh, so the Nubians attacked one of your armies. Notice how we move towards them, and they're like, crap, attack, quick. Well, that gave us the grievance because we were the defenders, technically. So I'm going to demand that they pay for this injustice. I was on my way to kill them, but they didn't know that. I'm going to demand hey, that they pay for this injustice. Ugly. These demands are like spoiled food, accepted only out of dire necessity. <laughs> what a drama queen. You make uh, this a better world. <laughs> fantastic. All right. 
We have another one also uh, that happened there, so we could actually do the same thing. Let's do that. Let's see what's going to happen is we're going to get this massive increase where our people will be happy with the idea of going to war. Uh, she's not happy about this. Uh, two losses in battle, loss minus eight apiece, and uh, they accepted the demand, which increases their war score. So their people are more interested in going to war because they've been this one roughed up this financially. One will cost you dearly, maggots. I am surrounded by maggots. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. A new reigns accepted one demand. All right. Uh, we also have a religion activity going on here. So we've got uh, three followers of our state in Mepsuto, Mepsuto or Memphis. Uh, that's awesome. So we now have three followers. Love it. Don't, I think of religion as a very simplistic system. And basically, to me, it's just a casus belli. It's just a way, a reason to go blow somebody up. Um, if they don't follow the right religion, you can use it to do that. Uh, you can get bonuses. I know there's more to it, but you can get bonuses from it. This is going to be expensive. Uh, pain. Oh no, it's a, it's a bear, right? If we click there, we can still retreat, and we can use these little arrows up here. My battle management. We click that, and it shows the other side. In this case, it's a very angry-looking bear. Uh, but my dude is, you know, totally going to take him on with his little knife, his water bottle, his beads, and his very fast-moving hair. All right, let's go there, and I think we'll just, uh, you know what? We'll leave him there. We'll tell him just stand right there. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll be able to run around, but no. Okay. I was thinking he might end up standing on the water. That's fine. We are on the water, so let's back go. up. I didn't realize that was water. There we go. Can we hit this thing? Almost enough to finish it. Let's just go there and turn. Oh, I should hit him when I had the chance. Oh, well. For your we'll there we go. Now, what do we get for that? Ten coins. All right, we'll take it. So I know these. Uh, this has been very, very, very slow, but I'm trying to explain everything as we go and uh, rationalize what we're doing. Is it the best things to do? Probably not. Uh, we just got a what? Oh, Halong Bay. We just found a world wonder. Look at that beautiful place. Halong Bay means descending dragons. Descending dragon bay. Um, these uh, islet, islets, islets? Uh, are said to have long ago protected mainlanders from invaders from the seas. That would be pretty um, pretty hard to get through there effectively in a combat. I mean, you can just sail around, right? But uh, City defense research, because we got a bonus of 30 research for finding that. Cool. So we, up, we got our city defense. We also get the world deed. So world deeds, another thing to talk about. Let's close that up. Um, down here, this is our, our events tracker. Things that happen, we can have a look at that. Yeah, right here. So this is the wonder. It's beautiful. If we mouse over it, it'll tell us something about it. It is on coastal water. Base movement cost is infinite, so you can't go in it, I guess. Um, cannot go through this tile. Nope. I think all wonders are like that. First discovered by the Egyptians, which means we get the deed for it. I'll explain that in a second. But natural wonder control effects. If we control the territory that it's in, we will get plus five influence to our total daily uh, turn influence. And both any city that we have gains 10 stability and 10 money per turn. That's freaking huge. Uh, I love it. Go. That's going to make a big deal for us. Um, we'll go ahead and pick this up. What is it? A curiosity worth 40 bucks. Off Not bad. Go. Not bad at all. So this is a little ways away from home, but not unreasonably. Wouldn't be a bad idea to eventually or quickly um, grab that, because that's going to give us 5 influence, 10 cash, and stability in the capital. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. What's it going to cost to settle down here? Like, way more than we can afford. Gotcha. Let's loop around here and have a look. What do we got? What do we got? A little clay pit. Or that's volcanic soil. That's a little weird. Just bubbling up from the earth. Uh, our fine scout in the north here. Follow me. Disconnected from reality, but uh, having a good look at things. That is a reef on a coastal water. Interesting. Right, what else we got? You are supposed to be meeting up with your friends. Uh, let's scoot out here. Now, we're not in our own territory, so we do not like the original tribes. And to mention this, we get no healing per turn. So these guys, until we get into into our own land, even an outpost land, we are not going to get influence up. Or, uh healing from them, so that's unfortunate. Now this unit of four, I want you to head up ooh, six turns to finish that one. You're gonna go that way. See if we can get up around here and cause some mayhem here. If I can drop these guys onto there, 
and start ransacking, it'll start tearing that thing down, but more importantly, it'll stop the progression of it. You never used to, which is really awkward when they would then automatically pop you out when they finish their production. But anyways, that's done. Let's see, look at our new research. I think we'll go ahead with, um, mm, we could get copper, connect that. We could go the wheel, which would let us get to our uh, Markabatas and the roads. It's 20 turns. I'll pass. Let's go back over here and do carpentry first. And shut off the wheel. Carpentry and calendar. Do the calendar first. That's fine. 8.4 research per turn. And we're running out of time. This is the end of uh, turn 22. So basically. Ah, oh, he just did. He just settled it. Look. Arg. So that would be an act of war to take that tile. Now. And we have to get out of there. Or declare war. That's unfortunate. All right. That's fine. We'll get we'll get around it. Now we gotta watch. Uh, what I want to watch is that these guys don't start uh, grabbing up any more territory. So that's my objective with these two armies of or armies, sort of. It's really over overstating the reality. But anyways, that those units can, uh, those regiments can mess around with the guys that are uh, likely going to be causing us some grief. Okay, so because we attached this place, it is an administrative center. So what it's doing is actually providing. Um, let's see, does it show anywhere here? I don't think it does, but we get plus one to all of the FIMS builders. So we can have one more scientist, money, uh, trader, industrialist, and, and, uh, farmer, uh, working. One more slot to work each of these, okay? Because we attach this. So I would love to attach this other one. It's going to cost us 80 influence. We're not quite there yet. Another two turns if we don't spend any. Um, but because of that, we've got 16 positive food. If we took these two fine fellows here and told them to disband their way into the city, we're going to gain two population. One of them's going to probably go to work there, yeah, and one of them's going to go to work there. So now we're positive four food. It's going to take us a little longer to grow, but we auto grew to six now, which is nice. Um, and this industry production of 44 is a good start. Uh, it's only going to take us nine turns to build the, the, uh, holy site if we wanted to the obelisk of the gods uh we could also go ahead with the horse ranch i think that's probably a go-to we can either build click this and build it here or we can actually mouse over and click that now this place is not yet attached so what i could do is i oh i guess i can't yet no i don't once we have this the artisan's quarters we can actually spend influence directly to instantly um, utilize or set up an outpost at each of these. So I could get the copper and I could get the salt if we had the research for them and enough influence to spend on it. Um, so that's pretty fantastic. If you don't have outrageously good industry, it's a great idea. If you notice before, we didn't have the ability to make the Egyptian's pyramid because we already built one. We can only build one, it says. Limit of one. But it's limit of one per territory. We have two territories in the city now, which means I can build another one. Uh, now, it utilizes, it uh, exploits, I should say, the industry and it really likes having other industry tiles next to it so if i went down this way we would only have like this as a potential industry tile and that one if however we go say here uh we might get this mountain and this tile and this tile part of the industry if you go there we get these two food and this one connected okay i don't hate that idea uh, we don't have to connect a maker's quarters to another maker's quarters. We just have to have it next door to any other district. Um, if we go here, we lose a tile of or a production of food from the river. If we go here, uh, these river tiles don't get their food exploited directly. But we do get the industry now, unless we want to move food. Farmer's quarters down there. Let's do that. Let's go this side. We will lose that one food. The intended industry. But I think that's better future because if this becomes food tiles, we might utilize or we might waste some future problems. Now, there's also the garrison, which I mentioned. Uh, garrisons do a couple things other than just the beautiful thing of uh, making some stability. They also become a spawn point for infantry. Uh, what does it say? Spawn point for land unit spawn. So instead of spawning in the city, we can tell it to spawn at the edge of our territory. So if we got, like this, a border spot that's obviously going to be a little content contentious, we could put these guys here, build it in this tile, they are here, and they would, they, the units built that turn could spawn right on there. 
huge. Rather than taking the two turns or three turns to get to the front line, they could literally appear right on it. Pretty OP, bro. I know. I could say I won't do that again, but I totally will. Sorry. Let's uh, link these two up. That sounds great. You had a job up here to ransack some innocent uh, creatures. You're so good at your job. Uh, these are not innocent creatures. These are. This is a lair, which means it's going to be an aggressive, probably bear spot. A first the visible mark spot. of this new culture. I hope the style is pleasing, because it will be around for as long as the city lasts. Excellent. So uh, we got another population growth in one of our outposts, in our only outpost right now. All right. Successful ransack and stuff. Ransacked. That's not our first ransack. See the sites. Appreciate the local culture Stop it. and take anything Stop it. that's not nailed down. All right. So speaking of uh, appreciating, I appreciate you guys being here. Ta-ta. Segue. Terrible one, I know. So we're done for today. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining me. Second episode of the series. I really do appreciate all those who have come back, which tells me that somebody actually wants to hear me babble. Um, we're going to continue this series and enjoy it until we get either, like I said, either crushed or we take over the world. But we have to stay as the Egyptians. Um, something else I wanted to mention. Uh, I like to do this on the second at the end of the second episode. Keep it out of the way of those who are not sticking around every day, all day. Um, but I wanted to say thank you specifically to our patrons. I've got uh, some people who have really supported us through the last number of years. Uh, over two years now that we've had people um, spending their money to help me do this content creation. And that's... You're, you're a bit nuts, all of you. But thank you from the bottom of my heart from me and the whole uh, clan here. The whole family clan. Thank you for your support. And uh, for those of you who uh, join us and watch and get involved in the Discord and, and the chatter and the, all the comments and all the liking and all the subscribing, it's awesome. Thank you for everybody that supports us. And uh, look forward to uh, more content and more streaming. This is a game I would love to stream with you guys. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Again, thank you very much to our patrons. And we'll see you in the game.